Okay, now that we have the image um, scaled in format, uh, for reference, I'm going to do a couple of really fast things. First, these guides will have a tendency to creep up and scare me later. Um, you know, those are pieces of geometry that I don't want around anymore, so I'm going to delete those. The next thing I'm going to do is I really want, and this is just good 3D practice, okay? I really want to model this as close to 0, 0, 0 on the origin as I can. So again, I'm going to double click my image and then I'm going to pick someplace right around the midpoint of my uh, base plan or my reference image there. And I'm just going to move that close to the origin. So this isn't a super precise action, but it is something that's going to let this work a little bit better as I move this around to different pieces of software, in particular twin motion. Okay, so, so that way the axis, like when I move this into twin motion, the axis or the widget that I can move um, the object around in twin motion will also be about the center of the object. So knowing Thorn Crown as my base, I know one of the first things that I need to make are these groovy little sidewall masonry pieces right here. So that's really going to be one of the starting points in terms of building this model. And I do want to point out, as I start tracing this, I'm not really going to be trying to follow these lines exactly, okay? I'm going to follow, it's more important for that, it's more important that I follow the X, Y, Z Cartesian coordinate system inside of Formit rather than trust the image implicitly, right? So I'm only going to use it as a guide, not as a rule really important. It's going to build a much cleaner model as I move through the process. So I'm just going to grab my pencil tool. I'm going to start right about here. I know this first line from scaling earlier is exactly 75 feet. So I'm going to go that direction. And if you notice, I'm on the red axis, right? So that way things will stay square. Again, square things for the most part make for a neat model. So I'm going to bring this line out again on the green axis. So I know the line that I've just created is at a 90 degree from the previous line. I'm going to move back along the red axis, back along the green axis again. And note, see that is putting me on the blue axis, which is Z. Don't want that. So pay close attention to what you're seeing. Let's go in. Nine inches seems like a really safe number. I like it. Right, so then I'm going to bring this back across. Again, I'm going to be looking for that to be on the red axis. I'd like to be able to see that dimension too. I want it to be a nice, good, happy number, like 51. And then it's, oh, too far, zoomed in too far. Back nine inches again. And notice this, see, I am off those baselines at this point but I'm making an accurate model. So super important to remember that, okay? Now for this last, these last two lines, I'm going to start using the inference checking system. So I'm going to hold down shift to lock in the red axis, and I'm going to hover over this endpoint. So notice it's saying locked axis. So this line that I'm creating right here is going to be exactly at the end of that. So I'm left clicking there, and then I'm going to left click again to close that off. That makes that a nice, solid piece of geometry. And now just from previous work, I know that this is, well, let's just measure it. I don't want to guess. Let's just measure this height right here. Two feet, nine, maybe three. Yeah, let's, let's go with three feet. Yeah, and that's lining up right about with those chair backs. So three feet seems like a nice number to pull this piece of geometry up vertically. So I'm going to left click once on the face. I'm going to left click, click a second time to start pulling this up. And I'm going to pull that up a height of three feet. That is the beginning point of starting to model this. So one of the next things that I can do is I know I want that exact same piece on this other side. So I'm going to double click to select all of that object. I'm going to right click and let's bring up the mirror tool. So the mirror tool simply allows me to create a mirror image. 
of my object. And, you know, if I would have drawn a center line, that probably would have been a good thing. But I'm just dragging, using my left mouse to drag that out. So I'm just going to place it slightly past, since I didn't actually build, you know, um, a, you know, a, a center line there. And now, then I'm going to, with this object that I just mirrored still selected, I'm going to left click and move that into place along the green axis. Cool. Now, it's probably best that I didn't do that, because what I can do now is I can come in and do my line tool and just right along this line right here, I can actually come straight across my green axis. And left click. That's no good. That was interesting. Let's delete that line. Not where I wanted that line at all. I'm not sure why that was up vertically. Let's use that endpoint right there for right now. There we go. And now I actually can have a real center line. So that is the exact center line between those two pieces. And that's going to be important later on for reference. So the last thing that I want to do, if you remember, format has a tendency to make things kind of stick. Um, in other words, if I start adding some of these pieces, some of the columns to this, it is going to have a tendency to push and pull these bases around. I'm really happy with these right now. Um, I want to lock those in place as they currently are. So I'm going to double click to select all of that. And notice this line that was connecting those two together and the center line are all part of that object now because they're touching. So they're all connected together. At this point, I want to be able to group these. So again, I'm going to right click to pull up the wheel. And right here is the create group command. This sets up my properties right here, and I can call these, um, let's call them stone base for thorn crown. We will put them on uh, a layer later. And yeah, that's pretty much set. Those are a group. Now I can move them. Things won't stick to them. They are kind of, in a way, temporarily pinned in place.